let us start the first presentation with a try to give an overview of today's fasting situation. The title of our meeting is Transformation Through Fasting, as clinicians specialize in long-term fasting since decades. And this is a very special phenomenon in Germany and in Europe generally. We observe striking transformations in our patients and guests. Next, this transformation triggered especially by long-term fasting, you must say, uh, affects three dimensions. The physical dimension leading to prevention of brain and body aging and to medical treatments in many indications. The community dimension, boosting solidarity and diminishing aggressivity. So for the uh, making of the peace, fasting times are extremely important. And the last dimension, not the least, is the dimension of the soul, or inspirational. Fasting lifts the mood, diminishes anxiety, favors intuition, and a higher level of consciousness. And this is why all religions of the world have always proposed times of fasting to make the community tighter and also to uh, get back to uh, strong inspiration and to pray and to meditate. The Medical Association for Fasting and Nutrition and the Killing Buchinger Wilhelmi focus on long-term fasting. Moreover, in Europe, hundreds of places offer five-day fasting for the healthy, not always led by medical people, but um, with great success. Our long clinical experience and our last publication saw that fasting periods the three dimensions of the fasting, which we respect even if in a clinic we, of course, focus on the treatment and on the medical part, the physical part, but the other two are always present. So in our, uh, one of our publications, I show that fasting periods of 5, 10, 15, 20 days or sometimes more are not even feas feasible and safe, but they bring countless health benefits. The Buchinger Wilhelmi program requires a structure with MDs, nutritionists, psychologists, physiotherapists, physical trainers, um, and even spiritual teachers in some periods. More than 6,000 persons fast every year in our clinics according to a program addressing the three dimensions I mentioned before. Many of them fast every year, so we have records of hundreds of persons have it fasted 10 to 50 times or more in their life since the foundation of the clinic in, in 1953. To make just a little very, very planetary overview, fasting is the ability of humans and animals to survive on planet Earth using their own fat reserves as fuel. When glucose is no more available, food glucose. This metabolic switch is programmed in our body and brain circadian clocks. We'll tell you about that a little later. To happen daily according to the rotation of the Earth on its head during 24 hours. At night, when it's dark, we are programmed circadianly to fast and sleep, whereas during daylight, we are active and eat. Today, we call the switch back and forth between eating and fasting windows. We call it intermittent fasting. And it's a very good thing that it's, it's been rediscovered because it's just what a normal human being should do. But in the new packaging, this is very motivated for many. There is another big cosmic rhythm that we might uh, overview because in our society and uh, today we have uh, p possibilities to conserve food in other places like in the fridges and um, uh, other places than in our own body as fat. But evolutionary, the intensity of sun exposition differs in both hemispheres. Half of the earth in the season of low sun exposition produces less to no food, whereas the other hemisphere enjoys high sun exposition, like we here today, allowing the production of food for animals and humans. Part of this food, 
can be stored as energy reserve in the adipose tissues for the yearly periods of fasting, lasting several days, weeks, or months. This is a year written, uh, 30, um, 365 days around. Emperor penguins, when we look at the animal world, emperor penguins fast during six months per year at polar temperatures. Migrating birds fast several weeks with intense physical activity. And lean humans can survive 40 days around without food, whereas obese humans and one can do much more. And one publication of the 80s shows someone who have fasted 372 days being enormously obese, and then it got lean. Today, nobody doubts that it is possible to fast overnight during 10 to 16 hours or more. Similarly, the ability to long-term fasting is evolutionary, a survival condition. We are genetically programmed for. But only few people are aware of their ability to undergo prolonged fasting periods. Probably because recently, in privileged countries like ours, we have technologies to, concern food, to conserve food and consequently are not obliged to fast to survive the winter time, for instance. But we should reinstall a prolonged fast every year for its numerous health benefits. In a review we published with Massimiliano Ruchica, we described main forms of fasting and related diets, and we um, organized them like this, calorie restriction, intermittent fasting, long-term fasting, this is the fasting, and then diets, like the ketogenic diets uh, and a lot of commercial diets that are trying to imitate uh, some of the, and sometimes do, uh, uh, emit some, some of the benefits of, of fasting, but think about the three dimensions. You cannot get them when you just get a product. Um, and then I tried to uh, update uh, this, uh, this presentation, saying, uh, putting in, in uh, an advance that in the European tradition, long-term fasting uh, is really well known. And in our society and in our clinics, we come from prolonged fasting times, even much more than what we do today. And we rediscover the short times and the mm, supplemented things and all that. Here you see that we put intermittent fasting, long-term fasting, calorie and dietary restrictions, where you restrict fats, carbohydrates, proteins, or metionine, and then the time-restricted eating. These are the new findings of today. Uh, scientists are, are juggling with the, the macro and micronutrients. This is a very um, uh, efficient uh, research and very useful, even for us, but still we base on a solid experience of more than 100 years. So for long-term fasting, according to our knowledge, uh, we need a medical structure and a, still, a, a skilled and caring staff. It is best carried out in a natural environment, away from everyday life. In the meantime, countless diets presenting some of the benefits of fasting has emerged, most of them requiring specific products. In a recent publication uh, of a scientist having made breakthrough publications on fasting, we had Merriman on several uh, meetings here, Walter Longo, he published a list of feasible nutritional strategies and didn't mention long-term fasting. Why is it so? Most studying, uh, scientists studying fasting do so on little animals like mice. Yet one day fasting in a mouse might correspond to a week or several weeks uh, or more in humans. Someone told me yesterday a mouse is weighing 30 grams. Can you imagine an animal of 30 grams fasting one day? It cannot be the same than an animal of 80, gram, 80 kilos. Thus, it is difficult to determine the ideal length of fasting and the frequency for a given indication and individuum. I consider 
as a task of the member of our medical association to let men and women rediscover their physiological ability to fast during multiple days and even weeks, of course, in the right setting with the right indication. We need to document scientifically, like we did uh, in a publication with a large cohort, that long-term fasting is feasible, safe, and enjoyable. Moreover, that it leads to the countless health benefits we observe clinically. Another fundamental task is to determine length, frequency, and supplementation, which is ideal for humans according to their health and nutritional status, as well as their age and their motivation. Sometimes people which are lean are motivated by spiritual uh, motives, like, for instance, many of the uh, people we work in, coming from monasteries or communities, they fast sometimes a long time, even if it's not especially for their health, but for their uh, enlargement of consciousness. And here, we see another publication that tracks me. Um, this publication is highlighting the fact, you don't need to lose, it's very busy, but it highlights the fact that fasting is beneficial to, tea, uh, to treat fatty liver. What we also documented in a known publication, it's quoted in sources. But here the, the conclusion is that, quote, the researchers want to use the positive effects of food deprivation to translate it into treatment. In other words, fasting is scientifically proven to be therapeutically efficient, but is not considered as a treatment, at least in this wording. And this example illustrates a shift in medical research. Medical research is less and less carried out by clinicians trained to take care of people. Mostly, they have been replaced by molecular biologists working primarily with animal models. And this helps us, again, to understand the mechanisms behind the benefits we observe clinically. And this is something which should be uh, in dialogue. So, moreover, the drug companies, this is another aspect that we have to keep in mind. Drug companies and investors fueling medical research are not very interested in interventions humans can do on their own. They invest rather in the developments of drugs and products generating, generating markets. This is why we go on studying men and women fasting in our clinics to better understand the duration, the frequency, and the individual program needed to enjoy a fasting period. Thank you.